Ama Piano, it's a South African brand. You were able to tap into politics where we have seen politicians taking advantage of artists. And I spent seven years on the streets, learning the streets, sleeping on the streets. But some people say you apologize because you got shot. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, yeah, you're thinking your life was at risk and you are don't you talking have... about <laughs> <laughs> who got shot? <laughs> who got shot? What are, who, why do you get in that? Uh, yeah. Who got shot? Hey. Mm. You and, know, and now media... The people who are creating media, yeah. the subject media, they know nothing about media. Media is tricky now. All these commercial radio stations in a rural province. Mm. And that in its own limits you to what you should do, who you should engage with, who you should involve, your stakeholders, etc. Et this is what is happening on the ground. I mean, I'm loving the Le Compo. Yeah. The Le Compo wave. Yeah. This is what is happening. The thing is, this is Le Compo. Yeah. You need to call it as is. And if you are not going to call it, don't call it. Just talk with DJ Cappuccino. Escape to the luxurious Meropa Hotel in Polokwani and immerse yourself in a world of Moroccan-inspired grandeur. With 54 standard rooms and four luxurious suites, our hotel offers affordable accommodation options tailored to suit your needs. Whether planning a conference or seeking a weekend escape, our hotel provides the perfect setting for your next adventure. For bookings, email sunmeropahotel at suninternational.com or call our hotel reception on 015-290-5400. Welcome to another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. I am Cappuccino. Fortune Maswangani, son of Gazani. I'm so excited today. I'm with a colleague, uh, a brother, a friend. We have worked a lot in many projects, particularly in Popo Music Awards. Uh, I'm with a media practitioner that is well known for his uh, opinions. He speaks his mind. Uh, he doesn't take nonsense. He calls a spade a spade. Where he's wrong, he accepts his wrong. Where he's actually having a conviction that is right, he goes all out. Jack Rams, my brother. Welcome DJ to Cappuccino. Just talk with DJ Cappuccino. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The first time I met you, you were still uh, learning how to DJ. Odaladi Perego University of Limpopo. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and you were rebranding, positioning yourself in the entertainment industry. True. Because I, I had to perfect my skill in three months. Yeah. And then after I learned how to DJ, in two weeks I was DJing at the University of Limpopo. Yeah. And then, uh, but I got it right quickly. I think I got my skill right in three months. But I know that Nekel well. Do you remember what year was it? Uh, when was it? And soon after that you released the song. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I and said. Helen Siabi was the vocalist on the song. No, 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 that's not Helen. That, that was a song. Hey, yeah, yeah. Who? That wasn't Helen. Uh, it was a certain Cosa lady. Really? Uh, I forgot her name. And Oh, Helen had her own song. Yeah, because after I started the Cappuccino brand, uh, uh, released a song, in eight months, mm -hmm. I was on air, radio. Yeah. Uh, with Capricorn FM. So that's how my career moved so fast, because I knew what I wanted, and I wanted to get in there. Mm. But I also know what got me into that. You know? What is it that got you into that? See, I knew I'm going to be interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> we want to know. Yeah, your, but, your, your. but as I said with you, I don't think this is an interview. This mm -hmm. is a, it's a conversation. Yeah. No, I, I looked at how... Uh, remember, um, I was in business at that particular time. That relied mostly on public sector, which is politically charged. Then I noticed how politicians respect celebrities and brands. And I was like, you know what? For me to survive in business, I must build a brand, mm. which is a cappuccino brand. Yeah. Uh, and I worked on it. Uh, and 
if you ask me if it worked, I'll tell you, yes, it worked. Uh, unfortunately, it would disadvantage me when someone sees a DJ, because typically what DJs do or perceived to be doing, uh, it's alcohol, girls, and mm -hmm. everything. And I still want to maintain that I'm an academic. I still also might want to maintain that uh, uh, I do things different. I'm a family man. Mm. Uh, I'm a businessman. So that was actually a challenge there, but it also helped me to have an opinion, to have people who can listen to what I say, mm. and to also be able to secure some meetings. Yeah. That really worked for me. So you, you mm. felt like in, in politics and business, you did not have that voice. I felt like, you know, even now, uh, uh, for instance, there are views that you'd lay on Facebook, mm -mm. which are strong. I think uh, those who are conscious of what's happening on social media, they are now uh, uh, getting to understand what you represent. And you are beginning to have your niche voice because I've seen even the debates, the, the interactions. Even the smallest thing you put, people come in. Mm. And if you are a smart politician who wants to know what's happening on the ground, I think people should follow you closely. And then I think some key politicians are now following you closely. So it means now you have a voice. It means if you request to see them, they likely not refuse mm. to see you. That, yeah. is, that is actually a, a where you are and what I wanted to go. Yeah, but, but, but it's true. Yeah, mm. I think um, even, even, even during apartheid, Mm. Uh, we had artists as advocates for democracy and representing um, our plight to the international community and society through music. Mm. So artists, yes, they have a very powerful voice. Mm. Uh, business people, they do have voices, but it seems even if the richest men, their money is only is limited to a certain point, maybe their money is limited to war, you know, funding wars and stuff like that. But you still find that on the ground, the voice is still more powerful. Like the war in Iran and Israel, it's the people, it's mm. the music that is going to spread the message. Mm. And it's the artist through their work in terms of graffiti, mm. you know, in, in, in terms of music, in terms of dramatization, stage plays and theater. You will see after when, and if this war ends, mm. you will see those artists um, creating interpretations of the history of their countries and what happened in the history of their people. So the, the artists, they carry a very huge responsibility, though we, 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 we should not necessarily say it is their responsibility, but by default, mm. they have that kind of duty to advocate and to represent ideas uh, traditions and cultures and represent their communities and societies where they come from. Just like what Ma Amapiano is doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it, in terms of tourism, Amapiano is a South African brand and it does not only represent the beat, but it represents also the language, which is popular culture. Popular culture, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and with Amapiano it's even worse because most of the songs are sung in Zulu. So every international person Things that uh, South Africa, everybody speaks Speak Zulu. <laughs> yeah. So, but mm. which is a good thing, you know, mm. that uh, artists go and represent. With this example that I've given, a lot of people, when they consume a certain music that is being sung in a particular language, they have an impression of what that country represents or mm. what those people in that country speak, you know? Mm. So, yeah, I, I would like to agree. And your strategy worked because, yes, you had a voice. You know, mm. you, especially you were able to tap into politics where we have seen politicians taking advantage of artists. And recently we have seen uh, 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 the Makoro John Mpe uh, Foundation mm. has taken advantage of using uh, artists, mm. you know, to campaign and to the recent one, which is being Shevashit, you know. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so artists are very powerful. They can influence a... Uh, 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 people in a very powerful and significant way. You know, I was listening to Chico on David Mashabela show, King David, when he explained that uh, at some point, Mama Winnie Mandela called them to tell them you are not doing anything as artists to assist us. 
uh, in the struggle and conscientize them. That's when uh, his music started to change. Uh, where I even learned uh, the song We Miss You Manelo, it had two versions. Mm. We Miss You Mandela, Where Are You? And We Miss You Manelo. And they would perform We Miss You Mandela. And, but for the sake of the radio plays and everything, for, for, for him not to be uh, uh, closed down and everything, he would call it Manelo. And the other thing, even if the movement in terms of when he started to produce for Brenda, the songs he wrote for Brenda Fals, that were politically charged and all that. But I think it's the very same thing. To, to have a voice, to be able to be listened to, uh, uh, it, it comes with responsibility though. It comes also with uh, sometimes you know that you can miss the mark. Sometimes you can jump the gun. Sometimes you can act on misinformation. Uh, and, and actually it shapes your opinions around a certain matter. And what is important is how quick do you realize and then also to uh, accept and admit when you are wrong and, and to also apologize. Uh, that's, that's what I've actually learned. Because mm. before you knew it, I was on air, Capricorn FM. And then even though we were doing a weekend show, I would always raise societal issues. Because I would, like out of the blue, Back announcing a track. This is Mama Mama. Oh, what a beautiful jam. Hey man, George. Because I used to work with George. Yeah. Um, man, have you seen how our younger sisters, older sisters, mothers are turned into prostitutes by the so-called politicians? Mm. I mean, literally they are selling their bodies. Mm. And I would spark a conversation that people would get interested because people would relate with what was happening at that particular time. And and I've seen that now, you know, a, a dance show becomes a little bit uh, 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 socio-economic. It, it touches on socio-political mm. things, matters and everything. Right topic, wrong timing. Right topic, but we're taking advantage because of now mm. the platform is there. Yeah. You see? So yeah, but it, it was actually uh, exciting to deal with that. But I want us to, to, mm. to know something, uh, which I feel like many viewers would maybe want to know. You know, a bit of your background. Yeah. Where you grew up, uh, uh, up until you came to the University of Limpopo. Sure. And then like things that maybe you can still remember in your childhood that shaped how you think and the choices that you made yeah. uh, uh, with your life. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, the things that <laughs> shaped me, ne? it's a lot. And uh, I've just uh, completed uh, writing my book. So a lot of information will be in the book, but I'll just give... Just an outline. Yeah, the, 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 the. So, you know parents when they are in routing and they, the mother or the woman gets pregnant and they say, okay, uh, we need to go home, give birth, and then we'll come back. So my mother was uh, in routing mm. in Mamelodi, right? She uh, fell pregnant. She came back to... Limpopo to give birth. Two years later, we moved back. So I don't know how you you will describe that. I'm a Limpopo <laughs> child or I'm a Gauti Mamilodi child. But essentially, I was born in Limpopo mm. and then moved back to Mamilodi in Gauti. Right? Yes. That's where I grew up. I schooled there. Uh, but uh, my parents mm. uh, eventually... I think love expired and they filed for divorce. They separated. Then we came back again to Limpopo. And that's where now I learned a lot of things in the province and I discovered Where exactly uh, did you stay? Oh, yeah. We, we landed in uh, Mangui. Mm. Uh, so, but the right name to call that place is Ram Mamtintan. Mm. If you know Mamtintan, it's just opposite the University of Limpopo. Yes. Yes. When you are you are you are you are there, you can see it uh, when you are at the Sovenga mountain, you, you can see Mamtintan just down there. Which is developing beautifully now. Yes, because of yeah. the university. Yeah. Yes, there's some great huge developments that are happening there. Mm. And it is great for local economy. Mm. Yeah. So Grew up there, <coughs> went to school there, and then mm. I went to Kitri High School to do my high school. Mm. Uh, 
graduated uh, my matric, quit high school, and when I was supposed to further my studies and advance like any um, pupil uh, who becomes a student from you know, high school to university, unfortunately for me, I couldn't do that because of financial constraints and lack of information and also support, yes. both from uh, you know, my family and also just the people who were around me, like even your teachers as well, because some of the information you should be able to get it from your educators at school, you know. So I spent almost seven years without schooling. So after this, metric. Yeah, after metric. So this was from 2005 to 2012. Yeah. So I spent seven years on the streets, learning the streets, sleeping on the streets, well, by choice, you know, uh, gallivanting on the streets because also like home was not really a comfortable haven for a young boy who just came from a proper family structure that was divided and separated <coughs> by uh, infidelities and a whole lot of uh, uh, unresolved issues, right? So I was a little bit lost and trying to find myself and discover myself, but the province and the people and the culture of the province mm -hmm. gave me an opportunity to explore and exploit opportunities that allowed me to explore life and discover the kind of person I am, which I think it was a blessing in disguise. And I, I feel like I was a, a given a, a good advantage to come here and be the person that I am. Because reflecting, looking back, I don't think I would be the person that I am if I was still in, in Mami Lodi. Okay. Yeah. So I was just the guy on the streets, man. You know, mm. I've done almost everything and anything that you could think of and almost ended up in a life of crime, you know, because there were no opportunities for me at that time. Mm. So... But did you forgive yourself for robbing people uh, at Mam Tidat? I think, uh, yes. <laughs> 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 yes, mm. you know, no, like I forgave myself and asked for forgiveness mm. when I got into the university. In fact, j j before before that, mm. I thought I had, but because before the university, I between two thousand and five and. 2007, in 2007, I got an opportunity to be on radio at the University of Limpopo, mm. Radio TEF. That's when I started seeing things in a different light and I started becoming a changed person. Mm. But it did not happen overnight, you know. But that idea of being on radio is an idea that has always been there when I was uh, in, in school because oh, yes. I, was, I, was, I was inspired by what I had mm. on radio. And I've, I, I've always wanted to be inside the radio. You know, I wanted to be like the people talking on the radio. Mm. I, I, I was always fascinated. How do these people do it? How do they sound so eloquent, intelligent, informed? Mm. They are talking about important issues. How do they know all of these things? So I was curious and inquisitive. So I wanted to be inside the box, right? But I did not know how. But I listened to the radio 24-7, 365, until one day Radio Tef announced that they are looking for uh, radio presenters. Yeah. And then I started... Uh, By then you knew and understood the craft, what, like you, you'd have an idea of what a radio personality does on air and what to cover current affairs, how? And all yeah, that. because yeah. I was obsessed. Mm. I listen, you know, I did not listen to the radio as a normal, ordinary person listens to the radio. I was more fascinated by the technical part of it. You know, 
that for me, it was impossible for a person to be that intelligent, to know everything about mm. everything. Because that's the nature of the radio presenters I listen to. Mm. You understand? Because even, if, even when I did not uh, go to school, I read a lot. The encyclopedia, the book, the book, the Room divider. Yeah. And nobody really touches those books. Mm. You understand? One day I was bored and then I felt like I needed to read something because I was tired of reading newspapers, everyday crime stories, what what, the politics and what what. I, I needed something to entice my, you know, uh, interest, you know, mm. to find more information. I pulled one of those books. It was an encyclopedia. I just don't remember the name, but it was about Greek mythology. What do you call it? Mythology. Yeah, yeah, Greek yeah. mythology. You know? And the atlas and everything about the world and how it came about and all of these uh, controversies and uh, philosophies and everything. So I started reading those books. And I picked another one. Another one, it was about laws and wars around the world, you know. And the other one was about just uh, the history of people who changed the world, you know, who came up with this innovation, creativity, and all of those things. So my mind was not really blank. Mm. Do you understand? So the period that I spent not schooling, I was reading a lot of materials, and I was listening to a lot of radio. I didn't like TV because I felt like TV was too fictional and dramatic for my liking. So I decided that radio would be the thing that I listened to because it was too realistic, you know? And it, it was current, you know? Mm. So I felt like, no, man, I, this thing, this is what I want to do. This so is what I want to do. You, 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 you get to TEF FM. Then when you started to get into the system now, as a student, that was 2012. Yes, yes. Yeah. And you went for which course? Yeah, so while I was at Radio Tef, I'm exposed to the environment. I'm getting all this information, mm. right? So, but when I'm busy doing radio, because I love this thing, ne? I'm like, but there's more to this thing than just talking on the microphone. Mm. There must be more. And then, because the, the challenge we had was that the building was not, uh, or the staff members of the radio station were not situated in the same building. They were separated. So you, you just had, there's a marketing manager, but the confusion is the marketing manager is also part of the university. Mm. You understand? So you don't really fully get the structure of what is a radio station and what is it made of, right? So I'm like... I need to know more about what is radio and what it entails. So I started reading on the internet or what is radio. And I started finding out all oh, these, okay, programs manager, station manager, mm. marketing and sales, music compiler, technical producer, content producer, all of those things, right? So when the opportunity came in 2012, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to advance and enhance my knowledge mm. of radio. Mm. And the only option I had at the University of Limpopo was media studies. Mm. My first option was law. I wanted to study LLB, mm. which I put as a first option on the application form, right, for admission. Mm. And I put media as a, a second option. Mm. So, but unfortunately, well, it was a win-win situation for me. Either way, if I get here, it's still fine. If I get here, it's still fine. But the idea of me putting law first was that I was not sure if, you know, when you are convinced that our, if you take this course, you are guaranteed that you are going to get a job, yes. you know, yeah, you are going to. So we, I had those conversations with a few people. They were like, ah, media, you know how they discourage BA. Mm -hmm. A Bachelor of Arts students. Yeah. But I, this degree that you are doing is useless. Yeah. People are graduating engineering when you are graduating Bachelor of Arts in linguistics. What is that? Plus, besides, <laughs> in the field, you compete with people who are excellent, 
who don't have a formal qualification. Yeah. You go on radio, you go acting. Uh, uh, some of the journalists who have a good command of the language, uh, they can come up with stories that are good, but have no formal education. So I think that's what made it difficult. Mm. Uh, uh, you complete, you go to radio, you find guys who are rocking it. Yeah. And you wonder, like, what's really going on. I think maybe also that Kiora Neva effect or over that guy. That's the thing, because that was the conversation. Because a lot of people said, this is about talent. You don't, you don't need to go to school for this thing. But at the back of my mind, because I did my research, I realized oh, there's more into this thing. There's more, and there are people who are, who are working as professionals in the radio space, in the radio sector. You understand? With, with, with qualifications. But because of, of that, I felt like, okay, it's fine. I only have two options. I have LLB. I have media studies. Mm. I'm going to put media studies as a second option because of what people said and discouraged me to say, you can't put it as a first option. Put it as a second option in case they don't take you, go LLB, right? That's what I did. Ah, and can it? They didn't take me, go LLB. And the reason was that I haven't been schooling for yeah. seven years. Mm. Plus my certificate, mm. the scoring at has already changed. Who's this thug? Yeah. <laughs> no way. Seven years. What was this guy doing? Yeah. Now he's here. Yes. Yeah. Right. So um, they put me on media studies, but they don't put me on the mainstream media studies. They put me on extended program. So a program, an extended program means a, a, a degree that you're supposed to do for three years. You're going to do it for four years. The first year, we are going to prepare you. Mm. We are going to familiarize you with text, context, reading abilities, speed, assignments, small anyana assignments. Okay. Uh, small anyana assignments. You know, you are not going to do a lot of work. We are going to come with you nicely. You know, you are going to start with English 101, foundation, not even English 101. Mm. You know, foundation studies, and also age at the time. You know, I think I was 27 mm. in 2012 when I was doing my first year. So even in school, I went very late. So I was a little bit older. I think I, I, I started my media studies program also being older. Mm. But remember, I was coming from another field completely. So yeah. but I, I think I came to the university around the age that you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So... Around 27, 28, I was doing my first year at the University of Limpopo BA Media Studies Extended Program. Mm. And the first year was just to really prepare us to familiarize ourselves with academics. Because a lot of people who were doing the extended program were old. We had 40-year-olds mm. who were doing the extended program in media studies. Mm. right? So then we, we, we went into that program. Well, ah, it was a walk in the park. Yeah. Ah, it was a walk in the park. The only difficulty I had was that I felt like I knew too much, especially when it came to other media modules. And I did not attend a lot of classes, and my marks uh, during uh, the year were really like, mm. you know. But eventually, you know, I just warmed up to the idea that I'm a student, I must behave and adopt an attitude of a student, you know, mm. and then I started attending nicely. My first, my first and my second year, yeah, I was granted, uh, what do you call this, uh, buzzary, yeah, of being a, an intelligent, uh, high... Oh, those yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah. I forgot, I, I'm forgetting the name, yeah. too much English. What merit. Yeah, yeah merit, yeah, merit buzzary. Wow. Yes, wow. yeah, yeah. First mm. year, second year, I got my merit buzzary because now I was focusing as a student. But mm. third year, fourth year, I felt like, hey, I, I just want to finish this thing. These people. And the funny thing is, the people who were tutoring and lecturing mm. were students whom I taught and trained mm. radio at the station when they were coming you as taught, students. You taught them the deck. Yeah, the, the, production, the, script writing. Script writing, where yes. do you start, what not to do. What not to do. Yeah. Now it's vice versa. They are teaching me now. Mm. The same thing, I taught them when I did not have the qualification. But now because they have the qualification, 
I mean, they are class. They are teaching me now. So I felt like, you know, and I did not perform very well in those uh, programs, the, 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 particularly radio production. Yeah. Yeah, re, re, and journalism. I did not really perform well, but it was not bad. 16 years, 15 years, somewhere there. Mm. Right? But with the other subjects, distinctions, distinctions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I did not know what those things were, linguistics and whatever. You know, I was very curious and studying very hard. So I was like, I this radio thing, now I don't want to do it. But eventually, I graduated with a few distinctions. And yeah, I came out of the University of Limpopo. And uh, now I'm the chairperson of the uh, communication mm -hmm. and media. Convocation. Uh, convocation alumni yeah. sector. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I, I remember I came to, yeah. to the meeting there. Uh, when you were elected. And you didn't even tell me your ambitions. No, 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 no. Of being Bella, you don't give away your strategy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but I remember there was lobbying going on. And yes. Uh, I also got approached to Marno, but I think we can also have, uh, have a person like you in the committee, not mm. to lead it, obviously. Yeah. Then I was like, no, I would love to take part, but I don't think uh, uh, is the right time mm. because of some problems I had. Yeah, uh, with, with the management, which were clarified. Yes, uh, uh, and you know we are at peace now, and and only Lena, as you have seen the letter, was showing where I went wrong mm. and apologizing uh, unconditionally. Which yeah, but some people say you apologize because you got shot. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, yeah, you're thinking your life was at risk, and you are don't. Are you talking have... about <laughs> <laughs> who got shot? <laughs> who got shot? What? What do you get in that? Huh? Yeah. Who got shot? Hey, hey. No, I, people my, are peddling rumors. My, my my life is at risk, and uh, I'm suspecting that the people that have insulted in the no, past they honestly, are after me. Honestly, uh, me getting shot had nothing to do with uh, anything at university. Okay, I can guarantee you that it had nothing to do with it. And then uh, I only got to understand what happened with me that led to me getting shot just three weeks after I got shot. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, a, a factor at all. Mm. And it's something that I chose not to talk about uh, uh, for many other reasons. Mm. Uh, uh, not to actually uh, uh, say, Ibile, I never said much. Okay. Yeah, I never said much or that happened. It's just those would know. But I, I remember also on this show, I think I once touched on it a little mm. bit. And then also even on WhatsApp or Facebook. Yeah. So there the, are mm. the, the, the rumors that you are also in the logistic and transport uh, industry. Maybe you are a taxi people boss. Will, that's why you got shot. People will lie. That's what happens there. People <laughs> will lie uh, about uh, someone's name. Yeah. But that one, it's, it's, it's another fact. Um, it was mistaken identity. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was mistaken identity but uh, I so was it like an assassination type of a situation you know uh, 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 you got registered ne? and then you did your media studies yeah and it went well <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you pushed yeah <laughs> to your final year yeah <laughs> my final year yeah no yeah. but we were talking about the convocation thing then i was like no man it is not the right time for me to to, to really participate in this. Sure. I would love, and I think there's a lot to offer, because remember you and me, mm. we have experience. I, I registered a media studies degree because I was already running a media company. Yeah. That's the reason I went like, well, you know what, let me go get a bit of theory there and there. So you and me understand the media, and that we can have the most brilliant student to get 98s and 100s, but you can't tell us about the industry. Yeah. We are already in it. Yes. Uh, 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 we know the trends. We know what is hindering radio from growing. We know how other people, we thought they're exceptionally good. Now they are nowhere to be found. We know what affects. Yes, that's true. Uh, uh, we have seen it. Also even print and all that. So, uh, 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 hence I, I, I left when we were supposed to go to nominations. And yes. I left because I didn't want to even have the temptation of someone nominating me mm -hmm. and then I decline or I accept. I left immediately before the election started. And and it was I was going to the 
the institution, like the campus, mm. after a long time, I haven't been on campus. Yeah. I was going there after a long time. And then, so uh, did you have any difficulties yeah. entering the university? No, remember uh, uh, when you were a delinquent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or, 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 Academic or, delinquent. Or, or who could have maybe also be seen as someone who's opposing mm. uh, uh, the university or something. They have a right to, 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 to alert the security people uh, about such fellows because oh, yeah. you could be coming for a, a not good reasons but yeah, to, yeah. To, to, to actually hinder the programs or delay or anything. So uh, what happened is, yes, when I arrived there, they told me, no, listen, we need to ask for permission before you get in. You are essentially blacklisted. Yeah, I believe I was at that mm. time. And then I think I deserved to be mm. uh, based on what I believed in or what I was actually pushing at that particular time. You know, so I accepted, and then you remember I got escorted mm -hmm. to the hall, uh, uh, and I didn't take it personally. I understood uh, because you can't let a person like me go on campus not even knowing Ruyakai at that particular time. Then I attended, then, and even when I left, they were waiting for me. Someone was waiting for me outside, mm -hmm. and then I said, "No, get sharp." Then they walked me to the car and drove out, mm. uh, uh, and it. You know, it's the first time I even talk about it because it never offended me at all. I yeah. understood why it had to be there. And even with my case at the university, you'll find that sometimes uh, even some administrative errors, they can affect you. Mm. And even so many other things can affect you. And, and we are human beings. We, we, we start to, to, to feel a certain way about things. But, you know, for some reason this year, even when we started the podcast, many people thought I'll come on air and talk about the university. Mm. And then every time the issue of the university comes, I'll talk positive things, which I meant. Yeah. Because I made peace this year that I want to keep quiet. Yeah. I want to stop uh, 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 bothering the old men about the university, mm. uh, saying this and that. Because besides what, also some of the things that I said are very demeaning. Mm. They also hit on me as a person. Mm. Uh, uh, because when you are disrespectful to someone who's elderly, already, what does it say about you? It also created problems uh, at home with my wife. Already, I can have a husband who does this. You understand? No matter what I was fighting for and justifying it. Mm. But I got to notice on my own that maybe it is not the conduct that I need to. Uh, uh, the management knows what happened with my story. Mm. If I'll get help, I will get it. Uh, let me just keep quiet. So unfortunately, yeah. a lot of things came in after, but I've been brushing and dealing with them privately. Yeah. If you have checked, I think I've never said anything mm. uh, uh, this year. I, I tried to, to, to you know, mm. move away from, from that. And then uh, you asked me now, I'm a free guy. Ne? Yeah, I'm free. I'm, mm. if, if I need to go to the library of the University of Limpopo to study or to ask for something, I think I'll go yeah. uh, uh, peacefully. If I need to go to the university to do some stuff, I'll go. Even if I can be stopped, cleared, and every, I won't have a problem. Mm. But my conscience is now much more clear. Mm. And, and uh, uh, when you make peace with the situation, that's where I am right now. Okay. Uh, yes, I hope and pray that I get my qualification. Mm. I worked hard for it. Mm. I didn't cut corners. Uh, uh, and then it will happen, I believe. It will happen. I just don't know when. Sure. But, but the stand that I took is that I'm going just to be quiet about it. Mm. Uh, 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 and, with, so, and life continues. Yeah. Uh, I'm studying. I will still be uh, doing this. I'm I think I'm finishing another program that I'm doing with another university. Mm. We still continue. It's, it's, it's a battle. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The um, university... You, the, have, the, you wanted the, me there, no? Eh? <laughs> 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 the university that we love and cherish so much. I mean, like, a lot of people will tell you, even myself, I'll tell you, if you survive University of Limpopo, you'll survive anywhere in the world. Oh, man, you know what, what I appreciate more about University of Limpopo? University of Limpopo has taken poor people 
you never even had money. Yeah, so yo, yeah, that is a very important yeah, I've point. I've seen that university where someone comes from the villages with a metric certificate and come and wait as a player and say, I can say. I've seen how the university would actually adopt such people in the system, make sure that basics are covered and they will get these, they will get that. If now there's even NS first. And I've seen those people rise to become important people in life. So that's one thing that I appreciate because of, that's what that university represents. Yes. It represents the plight of the poor. And then every time, even I commented, I think they had graduations last week. Mm, mm. I saw people who are coming from, personally that I know, they're coming from backgrounds that are really bad. And I saw them wearing red. Yeah. Some of them are people who would say, Rotman are not chaletanicho. Are not this. And if I had something, I would try to give them. And I saw them being doctors. And when you ask where they are, uh, some bako companies and so some are running their own companies. Mm. Some are, are in public sector mm. institutions and they're having, they're holding key positions. And then that's why even in my runs, I never actually, I, 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 I was more on about what I thought at that time is mm. affecting me. Not that it's a shitty university. It is not. No, no, it is. Uh, it is not. You asked me of my personal growth. Mm. The confidence that I have right now to speak uh, in front of people to engage on matters. The confidence I have on business. I mean, I did my MBA at the university. Mm. The media studies at the university. It, 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 it molded me. For me to have a confidence to say, I think I can run a podcast. And I think I can put anyone, a professor, someone with a PhD, Naga. it is because of the principles of uh, journalism that I learned at the university. So, uh, 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 one of the best decisions in my life was to go to the University of Limbo because when I... Yeah, uh, man. No, honestly, that yeah. was one of the best decisions of my life <clears throat> to go to the University of Limbo and it changed my life because I was coming from a difficult time. Uh, uh, it is no longer a secret that at some point I was wrongly accused and sentenced uh, maybe to even life in prison and I appealed and I got out. So when I got out, the first thing I did was to register the investor of Limpop. And it gave me hope. Mm. Uh, uh, it also brought me back to reality that life doesn't have corners. Uh, uh, and, all. And, uh, and then I still believe uh, one day I'll go and serve in that institution. Yeah. I don't know as what. Mm. Whether lecturing, whether in management and what. I have plans mm. to do that. It's, it's, it's my hope. And then that's why even in my apology, I apologized mm. for kind of bringing the institution into disrepute uh, 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 where I did. And then I, genuinely, I feel bad about it. But, you know, as they say, it's water under the bridge. Yeah. It is water under the bridge. We are moving now. Uh, no, uh, we are moving. Yeah, and we are moving now on your career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, uh, uh, then you ran a magazine. Yes. Online magazine. The longest. Yeah. Staying. One of the longest staying uh, 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 online magazines. Sure. And then, you know what's impressing, impressive about it? You learned the skills to edit. You learned the skill to even do the graphics yes. on your thing. You learn all these things. Lay you, out. On your podcast, mm. you do your own editing. Yeah. Or uh, you set up things and work and do editing on your own. Look at the skills that you actually acquired on your own. Mm. And I was like, yo, I'm so impressed with what you do. Uh, uh, you know, you remember, even with Limpopo Music Awards, you'll come with your camera. Yeah. Shoot you, and I would say, I love how you, please, can I have those photos? <laughs> those photos, And yeah. you put the brand there, and never even ask anything from me, because I think you also understood what I'm trying to build. Yeah. And uh, even if I was like, on the spot, uh, as you are coming, uh, for Lima 24, I want you to be part of the people who are going to assist us with nominations. Yeah. Because I've seen how you know artists and know the terrain sure. and everything. And again, I'm going to ask you uh, 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 while we are doing a live show like this. <laughs> also, thank you for accepting. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so then now, uh, uh, it's now you. Mm. 
uh, with these entities that you, you, you are running now, you are also running the convocation. What are, what are you bringing there? Uh, what do you think should happen that can change uh, what the students of the mm. University of Limpopo are learning with mm. regard to media studies? And how can they link it mm. with the practical uh, uh, part yeah. in terms of what's really happening in the media industry? Yeah, so you know... Um, what are you bringing to the table? Uh, bro, now nah, nah, I bring lots of lots of insights, and knowledge and experience that I have taught myself. Self-taught, but also just to appreciate the opportunity that the University of Limpopo gave us because like you said, you mentioned, we went there without anything, mm. nothing at all, hopeless, stranded, frustrated and vulnerable. But we got into the University of Limpopo, we got assisted, and we, we got accommodated, mm -hmm. and we got taught, and we learned. You but because we were passionate and dedicated about what we were learning, during my studies at that point in 2013, I established a magazine, an online digital magazine called Mega Artist mm -hmm. Magazine. Wow. Man. Right? But also, at the, the, before that, when I was still at Radio Tef, I was blogging. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a blog site called uh, blogspot.com. Mm -hmm. I opened a blog. So I was writing a lot of opinion pieces about what I'm observing in and, uh, 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 and outside uh, the university. Be because remember, when I got to Radio Tef, I was a community member. I was not... A, a, a student at the university. So I was mm. not a member of the community of the university, but a member of the community of Mankwe, right? So I started the, the, the magazine, and I want to highlight this because it correlates and it's intertwined with the question that you have asked, that what am I bringing on the table as a, as, as a, as a chairperson of the communication and media alumni, right? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you that because... Men who have served in that, if you can ask them what they did, yeah, I we might find a little on some sure. of them, uh, except for meetings and eating free foods and hotels. <laughs> about, no, yeah. honestly, yes. and then uh, I was happy to see the structure mm. because I saw people who are now in the mainstream media industry True. to a point that I think, if needs be, you need to also influence the curriculum. Yeah, uh, uh, so that they can look at the curriculum challenge, which uh, which yeah. uh, which which is basically one of the objectives of the sector mm -hmm. to assist the university with programs and uh, uh, the curriculum mm -hmm. to say uh, this what you are using now it's irrelevant or it needs to be advanced mm -hmm. so that it relates with what is currently happening because what I've learned is that theories do not dictate what happens. Practicals dictates the theories. Mm. That's why there's research to say what, how did this thing come about? And students go and read about something that was created by someone who's not even related to any media thing, but they are reading it as a media. Mm. You and, know, and now media... The people who are creating media, yeah. the subject media, they know nothing about media. Media is tricky now. Yeah. We have a lot of media practitioners with a powerful thing on their hands. Yes. Which is a smartphone. Yes. Who are giving us content every day. Yeah. Corey, mm. the landscape has changed. And then if as institutions of higher learning, we're not moving to catch up with that, we'll be left in a, a teaching folk media. Yes. That is not necessarily a, a, a empowering these people to go out and read. Because I think even, for instance, I've, I've watched even what UCT does. They have short courses on graphic designing, events management. But I think uh, as part of the convocation, you need to think along those lines yeah. to, to do even refresher courses. Mm. There are people who have graduated media studies who are in the field. How can you bring them up to par, especially with digital media now? Yeah, that is true because I'm also advancing. I just completed my NQ level five in digital media. Wow management mm. you, you know as much as i said that there are people who are creating media for media studies students to study media i'm advancing and 
well, for me, I don't even want to do my honors or my master's in media studies. No, mm. I will do this advanced certificate. Yes. Because that's where the core of the new curriculum is. And they, they have a focus. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm. So, so, so what I've always advocated for and encouraged is that, and I'm talking on this in reverse or vice versa, what I always encourage when I do my talks, which uh, part of the talks that I've done during uh, the public relations and communication mm. uh, career expo at the and university. And you don't call me. Apela Nagri, I'm invited as no, a No, you tell them there's a tab. There's a tab. <laughs> who, can, who can bring value here? Yeah. Add value here. So, yeah, but what, all I'm saying is that such things, please, man, involve me. Yeah. I think I can add value. That's uh, true. I think I can. Yeah. yeah. So, I always say that a media student should be someone who's talented to start with. Mm. You should be talented how? You should know that you have the ability to be able to speak mm. fluently, eloquently. You, you know, you are interested and fascinated with reading mm. words, for instance. They need to fascinate you. You need to be interested in creative writing mm. and, 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 and public speaking. Mm. You know, uh, you need to want to know how the technology works. When you look at this microphone, you look at this camera, you need to be inquisitive. You're like, Mar, how does this thing capture sound? Yeah. How, how does it do it? You know, so if you have those elements in you, right? And Stace, are you sure the mic, the mic is not too... Too, okay. too close? Okay. Yeah. So... I don't want to sound like those Nigerian movies. Ah, no, I don't think so. My voice is very... Mine? Uh, ah, mine is very weak. Yeah. I don't know how I ended up as a presenter, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's, it's like mine. It's I, because I, of content. I don't have those all. Welcome to this. Ah, yeah, no, no, no. Of, uh, For me, it's, yeah. it's because of content. Mm. Right? So, what... The, the, the foundation of this program first starts with the students themselves, the individuals themselves, which mm. will help the university because the university mostly focuses on theories and a little bit of practicals. They don't have the resources to really advance and develop the program to its full potential entirety, uh, optimal functionality, like where you have specialized institutions that really work on specialized programs. Right, mm. so we are inundated with a lot of text, 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 text. You read, you read, you put these things, you put these things. When you go into the corporate world or when you go into a government sector, you find that you are frustrated th because things really do not work the way you thought they do. Yeah. Because in media, if you get the basics right, those basics they are forever. Anything else you do beyond that, it's creative learning. Mm. If you get the basics right, you will not fail in anything, right? So that's part of the things that I'm bringing. Because now I started that magazine that you're talking about and that company, uh, the NPO that started that magazine, mm. I started it as a student at the wait, university. Wait, man. Uh, were you not involved with the university magazine? I was. You once interviewed me. Yeah. Kia, once, I once had a show, a, a, a column or something. Yeah, Kia, Ka, Kia Ka Magazine. Yes. Yes. When the Kia Ka Magazine were the first group to mm. be uh, called to for interviews, uh, to, to be journalists, the student journalists. Yeah. I was, I, was, I was part of the first group. Mm. Then I learned, right, how things work. Because I volunteered a lot on uh, 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 in a lot of structures at the university. Because I was also part of the University of Limpopo English Society mm. as a marketing manager and also later as the chairperson, mm. right? Because uh, and also the debating society. That's what I was doing when I was at the university. Because the university exposes you to those opportunities exactly. for you to be involved and to learn these things from small structures. You know, like. You, they give you a position that you are a marketing officer and you don't know anything about being a marketing officer. This is a new thing to you, right? But mm. you go on the internet, you, they don't even give you a job description. They just appoint you, you know the structures at the university. They don't take you through proper induction and really, 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 really familiarize you or orientate you with the, your position. You have to go on the internet now and say, what is a marketing officer? 
job description of a marketing officer. That's how we learn. And then it gives you the job description. Oh, you sir, you're raising funds. Mm. For as long as now you have that objective that you'll be part of raising funds. Now you have to think, oh, how can we raise funds? We will go throughout the university with a paper and say we want to do a fundraising project. Mm. Mm. Uh, 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 we want to raise funds for our organization, right? That's part of the things that we, we, we did, you understand? Oh, we, 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 we brought the first comedy show mm. at the University of Limpopo through the performing arts uh, 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 program mm. there um, in collaboration with the University of Limpopo English Society. So those were the things that I was doing at the university, mm. right? And I was like, you know what, ne? if you get into media studies and you are talentless and you, you, you don't know anything about this thing and you are not even interested and you will not even find interest, and I'll tell you why I'm saying this. In media studies, you are going to fail and you are going to hate media studies because every year at the university, you have media studies students. When they graduate, immediately they go into teaching. Mm. If I tell you now today, the people who are in the media industry, whom we graduated with, it's only 2% who are practicing in the space. Oh, man. You have a class of final year students of at least maybe 170 learners, right? So in 100 learners or students, in 100 students, right, you will have only 40, 40 mm. in the media sector. And, and, and besides that, who amongst those who graduated you can put in a functional media company? We're not talking about ready. Yeah, I know. What value will they bring? No, nothing. Nothing. You know, I'm, I'll give you a practical example. Uh, these boys I'm working with mm. were doing metric last year. Last year, mm. they were doing metric. These boys can edit, shoot, scale, frame, how it must look, mm. change mm. color, they can do graphic designing, photos they can treat, they can create. This, they are in the media industry. Yeah. They run a company, BS Media. Mm. Uh, 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 these are boys who are skillful, who you can put in any company, yeah. they will learn the system and they will get down with it. And, and these are the people you will put in a media studies class and they will excel. They will excel. And they will love it mm. and they will develop and they will be the best in the... So, like... So that, that bridge, I think... Yeah. You know, I think one of your roles is, is to create that particular bridge. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the quality of people you produce. I don't think you need to know all of them. They need to know how to... No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. You, but I think, especially towards the, first, the, the third year, there can be a branch, man. Yeah. Some who more into film, more into radio, more into, like, divide. Some also into uh, corporate communication. Yes. On its own. Standing up and saying, uh, no, man, uh, when questions are asked, did you build the 500 RDPs yeah, that, that you promised to build? And the person can say, with regard to that, uh, um, we have allocated some RDP that we have finished, but be able to engage with stakeholders and, and keep also to also men stakeholder relations. Yeah. You see, I think there are many things that we need to get now and realign that program of ours. Yeah, no, I think the, things. the point I'm trying to make is that it starts with career exhibitions, mm. right? Where when you talk to the learners, you don't talk to them to attract them just to come to the university. Mm. You need to be realistic to say, like I said, you've just mentioned someone who's in uh, uh, corporate communication, right? Mm. Like I said in the beginning, if you, you, you are not interested in public speaking, which gives you the ability to be able to articulate in front of people. And it means before public speaking, remember there are things that you do in the background. There's research of the topic of the subject matter mm. that you are going to present. 
And you need to know which point to present. Where are you going to elaborate? Where, what message are you trying? There's a theme. What theme do you want to send out to the people? Mm -hmm. So, if le, le, typical example, if you are not interested in someone like Vusi Tembekwai, and you want to study media studies and to be a communicator, and already in metric, right? You don't see yourself you, 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 as that kind of a person and you don't know that you can get those skills and abilities as mm. a, a, in communication and media studies where they teach you information, how mm. to gather information and how to present, you know, to mm. disseminate information, those basics, right, which they, any institution can provide a, mm. and they can provide it as a specialized program, right? But if we were to talk about the University of Limpopo and we want them to produce um, a, a high quality professional media practitioners from our university. Mm. We need to correct it first with Career Expo. Mm. That's where we need to correct it first. We need to go and talk to these learners so that when they leave, they understand, okay, I don't like poetry now. Mm. I don't like this thing of publishing books. I, I think I'm interested in something else. And then from that, you will get the ones who say, ah, no, this is my thing. I want to publish books. I want to do film. I want to do recording of uh, 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 documentaries and all of these things. Mm. But what do we do? We present these things as programs, as a degree. Yeah, there's a Bachelor of Arts in uh, uh, Media Studies at the University of Limpopo. Uh, you study journalism, you study mm. PR, you study communication, and then we give them pamphlets and say, register, register, and then we leave. Yeah, but I think wrapping up on this issue, uh, uh, we can also say maybe the program is designed to produce academics, not necessarily uh, people who are media practitioners. Uh, if, if you look at it, even the theories that, that we do when we are there and everything, maybe something that we need to look at. But issue here, uh, these three months short courses, they can change people's lives. Yeah. Uh, uh, if the, Let's say there's a course in public speaking that teaches you how to present a posture, voice control, the research and everything uh, uh, before you speak about a su subject. I think it can actually change. But from... Radio TEF. Mm -hmm. With regard to radio, where did you go? Oh, yeah. With regards to radio, after Radio TEF. Yeah, let me just say this point. We must look at producing quality even if it's in small quantities and not produce mediocrity in large quantities. That's the point that I wanted to make. We cannot enroll 200 students and only have the best is two out of 200. You have not done anything. You have just filled a register. So after Radio TEF, mm. um, I left Radio TEF in 2012 because I was now going to study BA in media studies. Right, and then while I was studying, I started a magazine Mega Artist Media. While I was busy with Mega Artist Media and Mega Artist Magazine, an opportunity came uh, on the social media, on Twitter, mm. back then, what is called X now. There was an announcement by NGFM, this is new urban community radio station. Mm. And they are looking for talent radio presenters, news readers, etc. I apply. I forget about it. I saw it on social media. I applied. I thought it was a scam and whatever. Then a bonus review interviewed the station founder, Ashifa Shaba. Mm. I read that article. Remember, I read, bro, I'm everywhere. I read everything and anything. 
right? Then I get that newspaper, I see the article. New radio station coming to Pologuan, NGFN. Mm. And then I was like, oh, this thing is real. Now I'm anxious now that I send that email and these guys, they haven't replied in two, three months, right? I forgot about it. Now I'm seeing this article on the newspaper, the hardcore newspaper, right? So I'm like, yo, no, this is serious. And then, in, I think in September somewhere, September, I received an email. And I almost did not see that email because it went into the spam. Mm. Right? So I was lucky because what I, I usually do is that I always check my inbox, outbox, spam, and delete unnecessary things, you know? And then when I went into that, I saw it. But it came from a different company mm. name, Ninafon, right? The response of the email that I had sent. It did not come from the email that I had sent to. And I read that thing. And then there's a letter of invitation for interview. And I must come and go for interviews. And then I went for interviews, interviewed by... Uh, then George Lacosta, Mr. Oh, Mdalo. Yeah. Sure. yeah, Mr. Mdalose and mm. uh, 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 Ashifa Shabo Muleya. Mm. Yeah, so I went there, I was interviewed, and first, when I got home, they texted me. Yeah, yeah. when I got home, I received a text that you need to come back for training. They did not tell me that, hey, congratulations, you made it, what, what, no. The text was instructive. Yeah. On this date at this time. Who sent it? I don't know. Because that r number was just random. Mm. But it, it gave the details. Mm. It was an SMS. Gave the details. So I don't know if they were sending bulk SMSs or whatever. Oh. Yeah. So it gave details on this date, at this time, at this venue, you must come for training. Ah, oh, we came for training. And then that training was actually to say, you got the... Yeah, was part. Yeah. You get the thing. Mm -hmm. And then we went for almost two months of training. Rigorous training. Yeah. Yo! Baptism of fire, bro. <laughs> Yo. Yo, so 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 two things. At Radio Tev, they throw you into the deep end. Mm. They don't teach you anything. They just tell you, Chief, here yeah, you click, play, stop, you drag music, you put it here. And then uh, you say whatever you want to say. Mm. No script whatsoever. I learned that the scripting mid my, 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 because I spent four years there. So on my second year, when I was really like doing my research, I learned to read you the scripting. Yeah. And then I started adopting that, writing things down proper, mm. writing things, ideas, topics things I want to say, how I want to say them, well, you know, because I was just doing a copy and paste and just writing down, you know, the things that I wanted to do. But when I, we came to Energy FM, mm. all of those things are there. All of those things, bro. Mic positioning. You know, when I came here, I was like, this, ne? Mm. Mic positioning, right? And, and, and technical stuff. Yo, bruh. And that was a tough, tough exercise. Mm. So Radio Tef, they throw you into the deep end. Energy FM, they baptize you with fire. Yeah. Yeah, just after you come out of the water from uh, Radio Tef, mm. you get into the fire. <laughs> you burn at least the little water that is still on you can keep you in the fire. And you can... <laughs> and that time... <laughs> That yeah. time they come from, from, from commercial radio station, one of the biggest in the province, Capricorn FM. They build it. Yeah, this guy, these guys are experienced. They build it and uh, uh, things are not going the way they went when they were there. Yeah, that's another story. Bruh, we, we, we can say whatever we want to say. No, they, but we, we love our commercial radio station, yeah. but uh, things changed. And then, and then you ask around what's dominating now. I think, yeah, but I think that conversation also brings us to the quality of radio and radio broadcasters we have today, you know? 
And I think it's not necessarily like a regional thing. It is a national thing. No, but besides, it's, a, it's a, like the problems that they are facing. Mm. It's what currently radio is facing. Let me tell you what's going on. Uh, uh, what is key also for radio, without necessarily talking about uh, Energy FM and Capricorn FM. What is key also in radio is the PR team, the marketing team. Yeah, Mar, you are low. Eh? You are low. I beg your pardon? You are low. I'm low. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 what's, what's important, it's also the PR team, the, the, the marketing, mm. the sales, but also brand positioning of a radio station, whereby when you have an event, you feel like, uh, uh, I need this entity. And uh, when that is that wrong, a lot of things can actually go wrong. In fact, I feel that across the country, uh, many radio stations, they can be exposed, can be exposed, uh, or they are still riding on their former shelves. Yeah. But they're not needed. They're not applicable. Uh, where, wherever you want to put a certain brand or sell, sell a certain service. Yeah. You understand? They are not on the ground with the people. And I've seen... Uh, 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 I think right now, when we're looking at what's happening in Pulukwan, Energy FM, it's always at the right space at the right time. And that thing is actually assisting them because they are also willing to do what? They are willing to look at an event, not from a monetary, eh, 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 or like this is what we can make from it. They are more interested in when we live there, they will know Energy FM was there. Mm. And that... It's their gold right now. Yeah. And whereas other establishments, it could be even a uh, public, uh, 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 talking about even your public broadcaster, right? SABC, they could look at how much is there for us. Mm. No, we can't come until you do this. And then that thing, we end up now, uh, uh, I think in terms of uh, market segmentation, they go for the big and small. Mm. And those who have nothing, yeah, they're in the space. Yes. And watch out with such a station. Yeah. You know, like, uh, like bringing it down to the province, uh, one thing that concerns me the most is that we call these commercial radio stations in a rural province. Mm. And that in its own limits you to what you should do, who you should engage with, who you should involve, your stakeholders, et cetera, et cetera. Limpopo is not an urban area. We are still in the rural of the... the like Limpopo... Uh, then what's the problem with the commercial yeah. station surviving? No, I'm, 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 I'm trying to emphasize on the point that you are saying that you disassociate yourself with your community mm. and you do not involve yourself in every and any program that would expand and keep you relevant and, and, and in touch with the people that you are broadcasting to. Commercial radio station focuses on urban market, high mm. LSM, CEOs, business. How People in Limpopo still work government jobs Nine to five. Mm. It's not a metro, this thing. They still listen to traditional radio stations because they still consume basic information and news and entertainment. And that is why we even have a genre called Le Compo or Bolo House music dominating in the province. But you will have a regional radio station that takes 10 years to playlist one of the biggest artists in the province on high rotation. People have to do first toy toy mm. for you to eventually blend in. And the wave why is coming. Yeah, yeah. The wave is coming. coming. And what you do is that you allocate them five minutes. You still play El Tito for me. You, you when, still, when re, you're not in touch. Re, re, la, 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 la. La, 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 la. You are not. You are, you are going to catch up too late. In fact, and now, 
now now we are switching from radio although they are interrelated yeah yeah, yeah. we are going to the music industry because that's one that what I wanted us to deal with music industry or in pop. I think we are now there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, 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 you are basically not in, in touch, mm. do you understand? Because commercial means that yours is profit based. Hey, man. You, you. Like you are saying, yours, you are focusing on generating capital profit at the yeah. end of. But the reality is that your location does not allow you to do that. I'll tell you of. Uh, fundamental objectives. It's a Limpopo Music Award. We don't care about established artists. It's not. When established artists, you will really feel big for our platform. It's fine. We are interested in that boy in the villages. Ramudruba. We are interested in that boy. Wanjalele. We are interested in that artist in Sikukuni in the villages of Mutalets. That's where our heart is at. In fact, what gives us pleasure, I think we are going to have an experience together when we listen and, and design on the categories. You will cry because we are going to reach a point where we feel we can include them all because of the talent we have. Yeah. Already I took a scoop in the talent that we have. It's people we don't know. Yeah. They have something in them. And that's what gets me excited. But when commercial radio stations don't have... Like, for instance, have a show. Can't you have an hour where you dedicate it to such people? Yeah, but we don't need an hour. Yeah. You are an entity based in Limpopo province. Yeah. Why are you allocating us an hour and allocating foreigners more hours? Isn't it the same conversation that the Saudis were having at the SABC mm. and Don Lakas were having at the SABC to say, but... What is this thing of taking money mm. and giving it to foreigners? Like, they're not even stealing it. You are volunteering it. You say, take our money. Yeah. And now you come in and say, you don't have funds to support your own yeah. artist in the province. Yeah. There's, a, there's a festival that has to do with, you know, it's Limpopo artists. Yeah. You don't even call and say, listen, how can we help? No, it's like we, 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 it, it took Oskido mm. to play Idiwala on Metro FM yeah. for South Africa to recognize Kim Munad. Mm. If it wasn't for that opportunity and moment, mm. and we are talking about an outsider coming into the province mm. and asking the province who's your biggest artist in the province, yeah. but Kim Munad. But when you listen to major radio stations in the province, mm. they are not playing Kim Munad. But Kim Munad goes and plays at Metro FM yeah. and becomes this big national now you artist. Want, now you want to claim him? Yeah. Now you want to claim him? That's what uh, we, we do. We, we are acting like the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. We come when people die. We come when people come from overseas and uh, we meet them at the airport. Mm when we did not support them to go. And, and, and that's something that, uh, uh, on a very positive note to raise, especially with our department, yeah. uh, 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 in terms of their participation in that. Uh, I would tell you, when we started our first Limpopo Music Awards, we were not supported by the department. Mm. In fact, uh, it's not a secret that I feel that even the leadership and the, 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 the MEC by that time uh, didn't take the program serious. Uh, didn't even see our vision. But I understood that we are talking about something that is on paper, that has never been done. But after that, the second year, I'm glad that uh, uh, someone came in and realized that we need to go with these people. Yeah, but we yeah. can't have... We can have departments, mm. it's, it's the same thing I'm saying, that you, you can't have a department that needs to be on the ground 24-7, mm. 365, not being on the ground. Yeah. And, and always being caught sleeping. Always. They, you understand? They, they are waiting to celebrate victory of an yes. artist uh, 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 when they don't contribute in making 
uh, uh, that particular artist. Right? Mm. And we are not necessarily saying that the Department of Sports, Art and Culture in the province is not doing anything. Mm. We are saying they are late. They must After a source. lot of young people lost mm. hope mm. and are frustrated. And now, when now they establish structures mm. with the intention to approach the department as a mass collective to go there and protest and submit memorandums. Mm. That is not how now you need to start engaging with your stakeholders. Mm. You are the first one to say, we have programs to invite stakeholders. We have activations. We have campaigns to go to this province, uh, uh, to these regions in the province. We want to engage with the structures that are actively involved in sports, arts, and culture. And not for PR purposes. No, not for PR purposes. Yeah. And you need to be able to say, in this region, we adopted this. In this region, we adopted this, we adopted this, we adopted this. Typical example, the Makoro Foundation cannot be doing what the Department of Sports, Arts, and Culture is supposed to be doing. Uh, I went to the event there, Shebe, mm. and I was proud uh, to see the weight that was thrown there, but to see our own artists that headlined there. Yes. Uh, uh, fine, we had a Casper in your vest, but I saw Limpopo uh, uh, celebrating its own people and having fun, which is, has been my dream. Yeah, changing the mindset. Ne? And then and then you as you are saying that that imagine if there were resources that were really, really focusing on that. Not only a a, 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 a profit driven a program like Mapunguri. Yeah, not as a by the way. You not, need to be a by the way. intentional. Yeah, so not as a by the way. You need to be intentional mm. to say we have people on the ground that we have assigned to identify these trends. Remember I said trends make theories, mm. right? And you know, you, you know like, I, I have to say this, you need a type of a kwenisto, makhaha, mm. on the ground, mm. and taking that information and taking it to the department. Mm. See, this is what is happening on the ground. I mean, I'm loving the Le Compo. Yeah. The Le Compo wave. Yeah. This is what is happening. The thing is, hey, Cappuccino, the thing is, bruh, mm. like the entertainment industry is Look the Look at biggest, what it did with Bolo music. Yeah, it's the, best, it's the biggest economic driver. Mm. Entertainment. And music comes on top. Mm. Because music is it's powerful and it moves fast. You can't neglect that department of music. Mm. In fact, if we were to have any additional departments, the department of music should be there. So that when a um, piano artist say that we are not supported by the, uh, the, 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 the South African government, we go international and we take this thing and we export, we yeah. import it. The department of music and entertainment needs to be there. We were there. My man... Uh the, 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 the stakeholders, whether it's public or private, are going, some of are going to be caught pens down with this Le Compo thing. No, but we, we, we are already saying that okay. our radio stations in the province, yeah. and especially those that we, 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 we pride ourselves with, mm. and unfortunately we only have one commercial radio station, a regional radio station that even reaches the, uh, some parts of uh, Mpumalang, mm. right? Who's supposed to be driving this thing? Then when you when when you tune in, you hear they are playing Yeezy, they are playing Ti, right? Uh, so it's about like unfortunately people will tell you about programs, procedures, this, that, that, that. But you are not in touch. You know, you know. Recently, uh, Tobela FM, the Hunadi, the host, had mm. to interview a tribe what the who's currently trending. And mm. he's got his own style mm. now. And uh, 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 it's not a secret that uh, I saw his entry. Yeah, yeah. The Limas and I listened and I was like, Was oh, he submitted? Yeah. I was yeah. like, Hey, hey, the something hey. is coming here. <laughs> uh, and I got excited. Uh, yeah. with that. And we, we have a new uh, category, uh, category, which is Lecom. Yeah, Lecom. 
We have people there that yeah. are not known, ne? Yeah. Hey man, you'll move. No, you, you you're going to listen. Yeah, so yeah. So 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 the issue we had, they identified um the artist as a as a as an uh, 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 Afro mm. Afro beat mm. artist. And I had a quarrel with that. That you cannot identify an artist who has identified himself and they have a word to describe their music mm. as an Afrobeat artist. This is Le Combo. Yeah. You need to call it as is. And if you're not going to call it, don't call it. You're not going to own it. Yes. You're going to lose it. Right? Yeah. And, and we need to change the narrative, the definition, and the meaning. If Le Combo was derogatory, it, it means now we have to say it is not because it is in different context. The meaning is different. It is now identified as a genre of music. There's a, there's a video clip, I don't know if you show it on TikTok, of a certain Zulu boy mm. who, who was talking about Nienza and Elimpopo. Hey, Nienza and Elimpopo. Uh. Then played a, 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 a charisma song. Yeah. I need to use it in the team. Yeah. That's our music. Yeah, yeah. And we must embrace it. There are people who said, no, don't call us Le Combo. No, well, that is a, d a different topic, and mm. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work on an article just to educate people on the, the, the meaning, where it comes from. And it's not an insult. It's not it's derogatory. No, anyway. it is not. Yeah. It For is instance, not. you asked me of my piano. Where is piano there? We're hearing lock drum. Where's my lock drum? Hey. But I get it. Mm. Music is, is a fusion of. And, 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 and they it blends. And, and, yeah, yeah. But I, I pray that we embrace this Lukompo thing and we make it our own and move. Because Lukompo is going to fill our stadiums, Lukompo is going to entertain us. But haven't you seen what the likes of DJ Call Me they've done there at Drama Out Out? Yeah. With the Lukompo. Is it Lukompo Monday or Lukompo Sunday? Something like that. Yeah. It's, a, it's big. It's even it sold out. You understand? So, what what is currently happening in the province is that entities that are supposed to be advocating and really supporting and being involved, and entities that are supposed to really really represent us, they are not coming to the party. They catch on too late, mm. and they catch on after they've been forced. Mm. To participate. No, uh, uh, and after someone catches uh, 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 that necessary wave, you know, uh, I was looking at pictures of really some of the pictures you took there. Mm. Bo Master KG with the Lima statuettes. Yeah, yeah. Kadi uh, I've seen people man Yeah, no, yeah. When when holding, they were starting, we were there. Yeah, <laughs> holding the statuettes, and you look mm. at where they are now, and then. Uh, in my mind, I looked at the pictures of Shoma Josie, yeah. uh, the, 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 the first Limas, and I'm like, look at them. And uh, 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 while fine, there are those who think they've made it. It's all right. We have seen mm. people, and we are happy they made it, who actually even look down on a program like this. Then it also comes back to, I want to look at some boy this year, mm. some girl. Uh, As a cliffhates. You should not bother yourself and, with those and, things. And look man. at that girl in three, four, five years time. Yeah. But what I also love, because of our partnership with the Department of Sports and Culture, we, I always raise the, 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 the debate. You can't tell me when we have the best mamang in the province this year, because our Lima is our baromet. Mm -hmm. You are not fielding them on Mapul. You are not making sure Marula Festival they participate. In fact, the Limas have started, if you can check, they've started to change the trends in terms of who go and participate. Because I tell them, when we have the best jazz artist and we have a jazz festival, what are you saying about our program? Yeah, but um, after people have complained, and that's not how you are supposed to be doing it. Yeah. So we uh, know the departments, they will tell us we are more of administration, uh, a political head, uh, this, that. Uh, you yeah. understand? Yeah. You are not, you need to be solution orientated mm. and not wait to solve a problem to come up with ideas. The ideas are all, these this, this kids, these kids, they're creating ideas. Yeah. 
And all they are saying to you, we need you to support us, create the idea. But essentially the point that we are saying is that how are we, how are we selling the province? Uh, we, can't, we can't entrust these young kids <clears throat> to be responsible for selling the province. When you, 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 you come to the province uh, uh, during holiday season, they must tell you the department of tourism and sports, arts and culture, mm. uh, leaded and whatever. They should be the first one to tell you oh, we have a Lukompo festival. The person who comes here must, be the f must ask, what is a Lukompo festival? Now you have a whole tour. You have, you have a whole experience. Yeah. They even take you to the music. Or this is, and you get there, you're like, young kids. Uh, man, big up, big up to Bolo. You understand? Like, you're like, yo, the youth, yeah. the, the youth is running the province. This is good. You understand? So that's what we are supposed to be doing. We, we, we know we have those, but we can't be doing heritage, 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 heritage. You understand? We need to blend these things so that they sell the province. Uh, uh, I mean, you, you, we look at even the tourism agency. Uh, I was telling someone, you have an event, they always ask you, how many beds are you filling? You know, how many people are lodging? And you are missing uh, uh, what you can actually do in terms of partnering with events. Mm. Uh, even what you're talking about, imagine if tourism supports really something that is originally Limpopo. Like bolo music, yeah. Uh, uh, like even Le Combo. a festival that they market outside the province to say, "Come listen to us, come hear what Limpopo people are mm. doing, and we give you an experience out of that." Mm. What will happen? And we are lucky now. We have social media that has actually broken Boshebe uh, uh, out there, even though they are neglected. I mean, how many times this boy they said they're not going to play his music? Mm. He broke boundaries. Yes, without them. And then they should not claim them. No. More radio. No. They denied them a play. They yes. said, no, this is not appropriate. No, no, more events are not a mix. They said that. Because the people who are also on radio, they are not proactive thinkers. Yeah. They are not, they are not, they are not pro proactive thinkers. Because if you are a proactive producer of a music show, you should find ways to maneuver how to be the first. I mean, like, podcasters are the first. Mm. And now, radio is even interviewing podcasters. Now. Because of the content that they are doing. Mm. And radio has the power because you can control the content and the, the narrative, the, the what, what. They say, no, this is too explicit. No. Mm. Are we talking any explicit language here? Nobody. No. no nobody used the fuck word? No. Hmm? Except until now? Yes. You see? It, it, it's not necessary about that. And it's also about where you are going. But also, do you think people are stupid to not realize that when they are on a radio platform, they need to speak properly? I mean, I was listening to this morning before I come to make G interviewing uh, Brian Baloy. Then from someone who's theoretically balanced ne, with journalism, I was like, this boy... It's not where he's got a mistake. No. He's a brilliant uh, a broadcaster and interviewer and engager. Mm. I was like, they don't see his body language when the, 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 the person, the, 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 the guest is there. How smart he asks follow-up questions and how he knows when to let go yeah. uh, uh, of a mate. And I was like, this boy is brilliant. You check Saul. Sol is a genius, it's a marvel. And I was like, it is not because of their popularity. They're not there because it's a mistake. No. They've been doing things right and everything. And then, uh, uh, Basics. Basics. I'm, I, I was checking even like in the province, like my study now. Yeah, the university, um, my, my topic is on the political economy of podcasting in indigenous languages in Limpopo. Sure. And uh, we are also observing... Uh, uh, as our case studies, Bo, uh, Richie B, I, I took the top three, mm. as I told you, mm. uh, 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 Limpopo podcast. And when I checked, I think even, I don't know what happened to one hour show. Mm -hmm. I think it was coming all right. Yeah. Uh, appreciate. Yeah. And you look at what these gentlemen are doing, these boys. Ah, uh, man, you love it. And I'm like, you know, it, it's going to be a gateway. I, I think you and me know 
it's not easy to put this thing together. Na- uh, uh, come on. Now, nice. let the reason is here, we are still here, is because of these boys. Yeah. Who knows that they just believe in this thing, but monetary, there's nothing for now. Yo, to monetize yeah. when it comes to podcasting, it will take you yeah. years. But uh, once it, it, it catches that, yeah. Uh, uh, then we can even look at even other channel insight and everything. Yes. But but as we are saying is that let us not be caught with our pants down when we have an opportunity to raise a culture, raise that. Uh, I have seen more sophisticated people that we have seen in their nice clothes and their Ferraris and Porsches oh. who move to but the country. Who moved to my compo? Yeah. I've seen how excited Manyora. Yeah, and that, that, that's, the, that's the conversation. Mm. Because we assume that there are few certain people who drive Porsches and, mm. and, 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 and Range Rovers and whatnot in the province, we, we, we think this is an urban area. Hey, man, I've seen. A, Remove a, that person in that car. I've seen Deal with the character and the personality, the upbringing. Mm. The culture, the tradition of that person, the, where they come from, how they were raised. My man, I observed Chesi, those that I don't know, you call them yellow bones, who are also driving a very nice car, singing word by word to Karishma song. Yeah. With, with that expensive weave and and I was like, we have something that we yeah, must but embrace, that we must play in our cast, that we must shoot content, Kayona. Uh, I'll give you an example. We have a category of best my piano. Yeah. I mean, they, get the, they got the formula, our people. And some are even singing it with our indigenous languages. Yeah, talking about piano, I had a conversation with a young man, and he was asking me if... If, if an artist in Ama Piano will, will, will survive in Limpopo. And, and, and my answer was that, no. Mm. You will not. Mm. We are listening to Bolo House and Lokomp. Mm. For you to emerge, you really need to be that special kid. You need to be that special artist that will emerge out of this. this, this. My brother. Lokompo and Bola House, they are here and they are here to stay. Mm. And how do you know that Lokompo is here to stay? Look at how long Bolo House has stayed. Yeah. But uh, also, on like, that debate, I would come in, you can still, music is music. Genres are genres. You can still get established from Bolo. Remember Bolo, we, there's a certain beat and type and also kilobit. Mm-hmm. But that can also work on a piano beat. Yeah, no, 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 I was just saying, yeah. him thinking that he can have a commercial breakthrough in the province doing a Amapian. Mm. And I said to him, your chances are very slim. You must take the certain route. Yeah, I, I told him that if you want to do that, maybe if you go to routing mm. and start collaborating with some artists that side and maybe try to come this side, maybe. Mm. We, we, we have one of our artists in the province, who is this young man who tried to do a show at the stadium and eventually cut sell it in uh, December. Uh, uh, the black Michael Jackson. I'm forgetting his stage name. He holds the keys, yes. Who? Yes. Mm. Musa Keys. You understand? He just had to leave the province and go and work that side with artists artist that side because that's where it's birthed. You know, it has its root that side. Mm. And that's when the, a lot of opportunities with the sound comes. But here, yeah, we have birthed something else and we are naturing it. And our focus and our attention is yeah. that sound. That right? Sound. If you come up mm. and you hit commercial success with a different genre of music as a ama piano in the province, you would be that special case. Here, after we listen to Lukompo, we listen to Chamanyalo and Gospel. Mm. That's what is happening mm. in Limpopo. And, and the, the piano we, we, we mess with is the one that is... Yeah, we, yeah. we enjoy... Yeah, yeah. yeah, we enjoy the one that is coming. To our, uh, uh, well, you understand? Yeah. Hey, we enjoy that one. We have accept it. It's not ours. But you know what? Let's not limit them. 
let them, like as I say, they have the formula now. I listened and mm. I think we're going to listen together. Uh, uh, for me, I mean, piano tracks. We have dance to piano tracks that are sang in Zonga. Yes. My professor will come in and, and sing in Zonga. So the language factor is not much of a thing. No, 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 it's not. You understand? Eh, 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 as much as you can say you are based in Jobek. Yeah, well. While well, you're based here. So I think your argument there could be very limiting. I don't think. Eh, no, no, no. It was mm. not necessarily limiting in terms of not the ability to do it. And it was because, you know, the market, it was uh, like your market is very, very small. Mm. As someone who's, who wants to compete in the province. Hence I said, if maybe you move away from the province, but you still as an artist who mm. represents Limpopo and you do collaboration with artists that we know already, they are doing mm. piano, maybe mm. there's an opportunity. I know there's a lot of, there's a, there's a girl I'm going to mention, Keto, just released a, 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 an EP called Genesis. Mm. It's an Ama Piano a, a, a EP, mm. right? Beautiful music, beautiful music. Beautiful music, right? She was doing Bolo House and some, also some more r and ish music, whatever, 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 right? I'm looking at that project and I'm saying, you know, chances of this project to blow in the province, they are very slim. Because the attention is on a different sound. Mm. The in the province, I'm not saying countrywide, she could probably possibly make it elsewhere if she markets the product elsewhere. Remember, I'm going to go back to that thing here, radio station. The location is very important. Mm. Even when you establish a business, you look at your location. And now you look at the product that you are selling, that is it sellable here? Yes, of course it's going to sell, but is it going to reach its potential? I get you. I yes. get you, Ray. If she takes a song, to a commercial radio station here that is piano and they have youngster uh, 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 who would they want to really they would play? rather play a young stunner song no, 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 I get it. yeah but if there's a young stunner and a charisma they would play both both at and the same level at the, with the same respect i i, I heard a song um uh, calvin momoli Makat. yeah hey, man, it rocks. yeah it rocks but she was true to herself. Of course. Uh, uh, with the beat, which I call, I still think it's Lukomp. Yeah. Uh, that brought her, brought her there. But she was able to be called to come and feature on this one. So what I like about it is that she sings in Venda on that song. Uh, 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 it shows that sometimes music, a genre, language is not much of a factor. Yeah, she had her songs before, like two years, three years ago. Mm. With with Kabza the small, you know, mm. jumped on uh, my piano thing. She did her thing with the. But ch 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 check what Master KG did. Pelana, what Master KG? Master KG's music. I don't even call it piano because I think it's no, it's a, not piano. It's a fuse between a bit of piano and bowl. Bowl, yes, that's what it is. There's, there's a certain blend. In fact, he started a genre that he's not aware of. Yeah, and he has also adopted the sound from. Uh, is it? Uh, Lesotho Botswana. Mm. He's working with a lot of guys outside the province who have also brought some very interesting element. Mm. You know, even that uh, Nusa Nusa song, mm. you could tell or the the sound is. It's uh, Master KG is one of the people who actually took Bolo House music and gave it to people of Gauteng and the Zulu speaking people. They took it there. Yeah, he, he's a pioneer too. Yeah, he introduced uh, the, the, the sound to mm. to the country. Man, big up to Master KG, big up to uh, Kim Munada, man. Uh, they stayed true to themselves. Uh, big up to many other artists. You know, I think you and me, Jagrams, mm. we're not going to finish this. Thing. Ah, I just fail in this thing. Uh, 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 he's signing to Murio. Time is... Yeah, the cameras are hot now. Cameras eh? are hot, hot now. The but spaces man, are full. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 you know, big how, how many minutes do we have, man? <laughs> I think so. That we can on, save. On, on our 42. 42. Yeah, yeah, let's do two. Let's do two. So yeah, two. let's yeah. finish the two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But two. like, uh, I'm glad we're on. 
the same page in terms of what we are proud of and what we see yeah. uh, with regard to Lekwampo makes me happy. And I've checked out recently when I drive in my car, I play these people. I don't know them. I don't even know the lyrics. I just go, sing with them and, and I get happy. But Cappuccino, mm. who are you? Mm. Argan, my brother, you're driving a, a, an uh, extravagant uh, car. Uh, you know, uh, but, yeah. and, uh, and, and you, are, you, are, you, are, you are staying in Centen, mm. right? Mm. Arga, but who are you, bra? You are mm. still a boy from Limpopo. Yeah. You, you are still that Tsonga boy ah, yeah. from Limpopo. Yeah. You will remain true to your roots. Whether you, you are wherever you are, when mm. you hear that uh, Gaza music, mm. you will dance in your private space. I get You will dance in your private space. Mm. But now we are in Limpopo. Everyone is driving a Range Rover, but they are true to themselves. They don't mm. care about their material position in the class and the status and their titles. Mm. No, we are home here. We will do what we do at home. We will uh, play le, le, le Combo, we will dance to Le Combo. Because it, uh, during the, 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 the Shebeshit uh, festival, mm. right? Did you see the cars that parked there? No. I mean, like, no, 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 I saw. Shebeshit arrived in a helicopter. We are talking about cars. Remember, he arrived in a helicopter. There were two VIPs. The one uh, with where the, the executive mayor was at. Yeah. And the other one of uh, uh, social lights and those who bought tables, there were key people there. Yes, I saw many magnates there. Yeah, uh, who were enjoying themselves, mm. and I got happy. What happened when that boy got on stage? All of them they moved. They were on stage. They were taking videos. Like there were fans. Mm. The, the queen, the, the, the queen of the night for me was charisma, man. Yeah. Uh, was, but I want to open a blank page for you ne? Mm -hmm. to speak to the industry, speak to young people, the mindset in terms of the, the, the music industry, whether it's the radio station. I want you mm -hmm. to look at the camera and just say a piece of your mind and how maybe with regard to them changing the attitude, yeah. uh, uh, embracing mm -hmm. what is our own, you know, mm -hmm. anything that can come to your mind. Also, playlisting us and, and, and uh, local media in terms of print, the role they can play, the department, uh, 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 tourism, mm. uh, whatever it is, I'm giving you a blank check oh, yeah. to, to say something. Okay. You know, you know, you know, um, uh, the, the industry needs one to be consistent and you will stay long in the industry. But you cannot only rely on releasing music. You need to establish yourself as a business structure so that you are able to manage your music and it's able to assist you and support you in the long term. You need to behave yourself like a professional. It is, it is very important to conduct yourself as a professional in the music industry. And I would like to urge artists, especially those that who are now really like making it and they're they making uh, waves and they are, they're getting books, they are always on stage performing. You have already achieved that. Your role now is to learn the music business as an artist. Your role now is to run a company and understand how music business works because that's where a lot of money is. This other things, like what did Mapurisa say? Mapurisa said, "Femi a fela, hype a fela, and re femi fela, re hype fela." When the bookings are no longer coming the way they used to come, when people are no longer giving you the attention that you used to get, when the streams are no longer the same streams that you used to get, you need to have a support structure that will still keep you in the game, keep you relevant, and you need to be able to manage your music, register your music, treat yourself as a business, try to get endorsement deals, try to get opportunities that will elevate your brand. Because the other thing is, um, Artists think that when, 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 when they get bookings, 
That's it. You know, getting bookings is just part of it. And uh, getting bookings is for you to be able to support yourself now and to be able to cover expenses there and here and maybe to be able to pay your rent and whatever, whatever. But what is in the long run? What are you planning in the wrong run? What is your investment? And your investment is taking care of the music business, understanding the music business, because you are already there. You have achieved that thing. So I don't know, man, Capuchini. There's a lot. I can't just go on running, but I, I just addressed artists. I just... No, no, I, I, yeah. I, I listened. The, the music business is important. Yeah. The, like, I always tell people, once you are inside, it's like when I tell radio presenters, once you are inside the radio station, you have arrived, you have achieved mm. something great. Mm. Now it's for you to work. Mm. You can't be shining, oh yeah, YFM, what, what, what. We know that. Mm. You have already achieved the title of working at a particular radio station. Mm. Now, what are you going to do with that opportunity for yourself now? Mm. Mm. To be the best in the game. We already gave you the mic. We did not deny you the opportunity. You are already on stage performing. We've booked you. We gave you 20,000, 40,000. Mm. There's nothing beyond that that you are going to do. What are you going to do? Now it says learn the music business. And now, if you want to learn how people move, look at how Munada is moving now. Mm. But like if Munada releases a song now, we don't care. Yeah, it's just another Munada song. And I think yeah, and I, at this point he realized, or, ah, well. And that's why he's not even releasing a lot of music. His performance, uh, he performs hits that he, he made yeah. five years ago, and the crowd sing their lungs. But out. look at how he's moving. Mm. He's moving now to be a promoter. Yeah. Project manager. Runs his own shows. Runs his own yeah. shows. That's where he's getting into now. Mm. And now where he is, he's talking to serious stakeholders and corporate uh, companies and mm. government now. He sits in boardrooms. So I have Munaden. Mm. Hey, I need funding. I need support. I need sponsors. Jack Rams. Big boss. It's king. Rams. He's moving like a king now. Jack Rams. Do you understand? And that's what a lot of artists need to learn and that's what they need to do. To not just admire Monada with his house and cars, but look at how he's moving. Whether you hate him or you like him, the fact of the matter is the bro is moving and he's moving like a king. I think what Jack Rams is saying is that artists need to now uh, wake up, be smart enough, exploit opportunities, uh, their brands and create something from that. And I appreciate you, uh, and I hope and wish the province can appreciate you, uh, the way I look at you, your contribution, your passion, and also your intelligent analysis in these things. There are many things that you say there, I'm like, oh, you are dro dropping gems. There are some, uh, uh, they look like you are squabbling, uh. <laughs> but you are raising pertinent matters. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the reason they also, uh, in other people, it rubs them the wrong way. Nabile, I chose not to engage you on uh, other things, Zahao, but I think keep on having that voice. Don't kill it. Uh, 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 and I've also checked that you separate the Jack Rams uh, that is opinionated on Facebook with your mega artist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also uh, 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 your mega artist, even your, uh, the one, the stories that you always actually publish online. You can see that this is a journalist who's reporting a story objectively. It has nothing to do with what you believe. Is the story the way it is. So, man, keep it going. I think uh, uh, you, you, you are contributing yeah. a lot. Some are going to realize later that, yo, this person has been actually dropping bombs. Uh, stay active in this thing. Don't lose hope. Uh, uh, we are together. We, we have not seen the money yet yeah. uh, from this industry. I think you and me. Uh, ah, we've lost a lot. We've, we've also lost a lot, but that doesn't mean we must stop. Yeah. Uh, uh, encouraging people, acknowledging that people have talent 
and they need to actually move with that and appreciating that some people are actually good at something. Mm. I want, this is your home, man. You know, yeah. you know how many times I came to you asking you when I want to start. Yeah. I think you <laughs> saw this studio before yeah. we, we had anything. And I always call you mm. to say, Jack Rams, uh, what do you think about this? Sometimes you'll tell me, no, 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 I listen to this and that, check this thing out. Mm. And then I feel that I'm maturing in this space. Maybe I'll be a better presenter in two, three years' time because of also your input. Yeah. So keep on doing your thing, man. Uh, let's see how far we can take this whole thing. And thank you for coming to our studio sure. uh, uh, to engage and... Uh, even though you want to talk about guns and gunshots, <laughs> very <laughs> relevant to music. But yeah, thank but you very yeah. much. <laughs> the, the, you know, my intention mm. has always been clear and specific. It, though I'm deliberate in some of the things that I say because I want to provoke um, people's uh, thinking mm. and understanding and opinions I want to hear. A lot of people might not get it, but I'm learning a lot from them, from engaging, mm. because I'm deliberate in saying something, because I know people are going to say something. But we start engaging and we start learning from one another. My intention is always to inform and to educate and nothing else. Mm. And if you're going to take anything that I say personally, you're going to miss the point. And by the time you realize that it was an educational and information uh, a con uh, co conversation, it will be too late. Mm. It will be very late, 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 because some are subtle, because they come with a pinch of controversy and uh, squabbling, like you're saying. But mm. the, 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 the thing is to have people conversing and learning and getting information. And that's mm. why we have programs that empower young people through our projects that we do. So, I mm. mean, I don't have beef with anyone or I, I, no, no, no. The, mm. Those things, they don't exist with me. The, those mm. things, they don't exist. No, and thank you very much. I appreciate you, man. Yes. Uh, thank you for listening to Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino for being with us till the end. Uh, don't forget to share, subscribe, talk about it. If there's a clip that you like, just share on your social media. But we really, really want to appreciate that you are with us, that you have subscribed, that you have actually given comments that are building us. Just talk with DJ Capuchin. <laughs>